Hello friends and welcome to jwreasoning.com. In this video I have many things I'd like to share and the one thing I'd like to ask you first is in your understanding as a Jehovah's Witness would you say that the governing body or the anointed ones have more insight or maybe more Holy Spirit than you or I as a rank and file Jehovah's Witness? Is it your understanding that the governing body has a special type of insight or even the anointed ones before the governing body became the faithful slave when all of the 144,000 or the collective group were considered the faithful slave? Would you say that they had more insight than you or I? My understanding was that they did. That was how I felt as an elder in the congregation. I always thought, well, these brothers probably have more insight than we do. At least when I first became a witness, that's how I felt, I should say. So just keep that in mind as we go through this. Now, with the ever-changing doctrines of the Watchtower, you never know what they're going to say from one month to the next. You never know how their doctrines are going to change. So what I wanted to do first was say that when I was active when I was an elder in the congregation, it was taught that the governing body or the anointed ones would live into Armageddon and at some point during Armageddon they would die and then they would be resurrected to their heavenly life. Now that has changed since I was in the organization and now they teach something different and many of you probably know that. I have found that a number of Jehovah's Witnesses weren't aware of that. So what I'd like to do is just share an article with you. Uh, I'm going to begin by sharing this watchtower from 2015, July 15th, 2015. And listen carefully to what this says. This is under the heading, Shining Brightly in the Kingdom. The article is entitled, Your Deliverance is Getting Near. What will happen after Gog of Magog starts the attack on God's people? Both Matthew and Mark record the same event. The Son of Man will send out the angels and will gather His chosen ones together from the four winds, from earth's extremity to heaven's extremity. This gathering work does not refer to the initial ingathering of anointed ones, nor does it refer to the final sealing of the remaining anointed ones. That sealing happens before the outbreak of the Great Tribulation. So what is the gathering work that Jesus mentions? It is the time when the remaining ones of the 144,000 will receive their heavenly reward. This event will take place at some point after the beginning of the attack by Gog of Magog. Then these words of Jesus will be fulfilled. At that time, the righteous ones will shine as brightly as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Does this mean there will be a rapture of the anointed ones? Many in Christendom believe, according to this teaching, that Christians will be boldly caught up from the earth. Then they expect that Jesus will visibly return to rule the earth. However, the Bible clearly shows that the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and that Jesus will come on the clouds of heaven. Both of these expressions imply invisibility. Additionally, flesh and blood cannot inherit God's kingdom. So those who will be taken to heaven will first need to be changed in a moment in the blink of an eye during the last trumpet. Therefore, while we do not use the term rapture here because of its wrong connotation, the remaining faithful anointed will be gathered together in an instant of time. Well, this makes me ask the question, what's going to happen? This has actually bought some time for Jehovah's Witnesses that believe the end is imminent, that it could come at any day, any minute, any second. Why do I say that? Because this is saying that all of the anointed have to die first. They have to die first before Armageddon can come. But as far as the Jehovah's Witnesses are concerned, as long as the governing body is here on the earth, Armageddon can't come because the governing body has to go back to heaven, or has to go to heaven, I should say. The governing body has to go to heaven in order to be able to fight this war with Jesus. That's what they teach. Now, let's go back. We're going to move back just for a moment. Remember the question that I asked at the outset. Does the governing body have special insights or more Holy Spirit than the rank and file or the average Jehovah's Witness? Well, this is a watchtower from May 1st, 2007, question from readers. And the question is, 
When does the calling of Christians to a heavenly hope cease? Now, I'm not going to read this article, but I'm going to skip down page 31, paragraph 5, question from readers, and take a look at this carefully. It says, how should a person be viewed who has determined in his heart that he is now anointed and begins to partake of the emblems at the memorial? He should not be judged. The matter is between him and Jehovah. However, genuine anointed Christians do not demand special attention. They do not believe that their being anointed gives them special insights beyond what even some experienced members of the great crowd may have. They do not believe that they necessarily have more Holy Spirit than their companions of the other sheep have nor do they expect special treatment or claim that their partaking of the emblems places them above the appointed elders in the congregation. They humbly remember that some anointed men in the first century did not qualify to serve as elders or ministerial servants. Some anointed Christians were even spiritually weak. Wow! Is that right? Can anointed ones today be spiritually weak? Have you ever heard such a thing? This is saying that in the first century they were. And really, when we go back and we look at this account, look at what it says again in this, in this context, in this question from readers. The comment is, genuine anointed Christians do not demand special attention. Could we say that of the governing body? Do they not demand special attention? Or do they command special attention? They receive it. It's borderline worship the way the friends treat the governing body many times. So let's continue on. It says, they do not believe that their being of the anointed gives them special insights. Yet, if you don't follow the things that they're telling you, what happens? They do have special insights. This is hypocrisy. I mean, this is complete hypocrisy, friends. I, I can't look at it any other way. It says, they do not believe that they necessarily have more Holy Spirit than their companions of the other sheep have. Well, if that's the case, why aren't the other sheep taking the lead? Why can't brothers and sisters or brothers of the other sheep take care of business? Why can't they be the ones who teach? Oh, stay tuned. Listen to what we have next. I want to go to the Watchtower, October 2019. And this was um, October 2019 Watchtower, pages 17 and 18, paragraph 14. I'm going to read through this and then we're going to look at it piece by piece. Listen carefully. Remember what we read just a few moments ago about when the anointed are taken to heaven. When that happens, what takes place? They have to die first. So listen carefully to what this says. It says, during the great tribulation, a change will take place regarding the brothers who take the lead on earth. At some point, all anointed ones who are still on earth will be gathered to heaven to share in the war of Armageddon. There it is. This means that the governing body will no longer be with us on earth. However, the great crowd will remain organized. Capable brothers from among the other sheep will take the lead. We will need to show our loyalty by supporting these brothers and by following their God-given direction. Our survival will depend on it. You hear what that's saying? The governing body is going to be gone. This makes me ask a question, and maybe I'm being a little, maybe you think I'm being a little bit outlandish here. But what's the governing body planning? Are they secretly raptured away? Are they all going to die at once? Are they planning an escape? Are they planning to just disappear? You know, I don't know. But all of these questions come to my mind because it says at some point all anointed ones who are still on earth will be gathered to heaven to share in the war of Armageddon. Remember what I said in the previous article. I pointed out that in order for Armageddon to come, all of the anointed ones, the governing body, have to be gone. They have to be in heaven. All of those who profess to be anointed. But in particular, we could look at the governing body because they themselves truly claim that they are of the anointed. As far as the governing body is concerned, they cannot be challenged on their being anointed, as far as they're concerned. So it says, this means that the governing body will no longer be with us on earth. That's during the tribulation we're talking about. However, the great crowd will remain organized. Capable brothers from among the other sheep will take the lead. 
we will need to show our loyalty by supporting these brothers and by following their God-given direction. Our survival will depend on it. Perhaps this is why you have governing body helpers. Evidently, these will be the men that will take the lead. They will be the ones that you have to follow from then on. So how long will it be from the time that the governing body seems to disappear from the time that they die? Now, some of those brothers, as far as I know, are in their late 50s, or early 60s. So if they've got another 20, 30 years left to live, boy, there's going to be a long time before Armageddon comes, isn't it? If we're going by what they say, if we believe what they say is true. So let's look again. Let's look at paragraph 16. We'll look at another paragraph here. Same article, page 18, paragraph 16. This is the October 2019 Watchtower. It has in bold print, courage. The theme of the 2018 convention program was be courageous. This program reminded us that our personal abilities do not determine whether we are courageous. As with endurance, true courage comes from relying on Jehovah. How can we strengthen our reliance on him? by reading his word every day and meditating on how Jehovah saved his people in the past. When the nations attack us during the great tribulation, we will need to be courageous and to trust in Jehovah as never before. If we rely on Jehovah now, we will have the courage we need to face Gog's attack. What's the saying? Let me interpret this for you. It's saying, if you trust the organization now, you are trusting Jehovah now. The organization is Jehovah. This is how the brothers view themselves. In fact, if we look back at the other part that we just read there, that we just looked at on paragraph 14, I want to go back to that. Notice the language. It says, this means that the governing body will no longer be with us on earth. However, the great crowd will remain organized. Capable brothers from among the other sheep will take the lead. We will need to show our loyalty by supporting these brothers and by following their God-given direction. I find it interesting that they use words like we and us and our. Well, if this is coming from the governing body, shouldn't they be saying you and yours instead of we? Are they including themselves in this? You see, making it all inclusive kind of takes the punch out of it, kind of takes the sting out of it. It makes it sound like, okay, well, we're including ourselves in this, but they're not. You see, they believe they're going to go to heaven and you're going to be stuck here living through the tribulation through this difficult time. And I'm sorry, but I have to reject that when I know what the Bible says. The Bible teaches us that we will live through the tribulation. I believe that those ones who think that they're going to be taken away or not raptured, they don't like that word, but caught away or taken up to heaven during that time, I believe that doctrine is not a biblical doctrine. You know, if you look back at every one that went through tribulation, all of God's people, was, was Moses saved from the Red Sea or through the Red Sea? Was Noah saved from the flood or through the flood? Was Daniel saved from the lion's den or through the lion's den? Were the three Hebrews saved from the fiery furnace or through the fiery furnace. You see, all of God's people went through a time of trouble. They went through a little tribulation before they were delivered. And I believe we will live through that tribulation. And I believe that what they're teaching is a false doctrine about the governing body or the anointed being taken to heaven and not having to live completely through that tribulation. That's a discussion for another time. But I have much more to say on this topic. I'm going to touch on a couple of these things as well that I saw as I was doing this video. I saw a couple of things that I missed the first time I went through, and I hope to cover that in a video very soon. So friends, keep studying your Bibles. Keep, if you're going to read the Watchtower, look at it with a critical eye. Think critically. Think about what they're saying. Don't just sit in the congregation hearing what's said and just sit there nodding your head like a bobblehead. This is what happens. I talk to brothers all of the time that say, how did I miss that? How did I not see that? Open your eyes. Study God's Word. Believe what it says. And I hope you continue to study. And my prayer is that Jehovah will continue to bless you as you continue in your studies.